Hello, and welcome to a new series that I'm calling Cool Customs, uh, which is the opposite of the <laughs> Cursed Customs featuring the Burlington Northern Santa Fe uh, Shark Nose in the Ice Cold Express scheme. This is a Pierre Marquette Brass um, 284 Berkshire uh, lettered for 1223 that I painted with an airbrush. This is my first airbrush locomotive, uh, so I'm going to talk about how I painted it and um, the locomotive itself. <clears throat> so I painted this locomotive using a Tamiya primer and scale coat black and scale coat gray. I originally tried to get the smoke box to be a uh, graphite or gray color, um, but that didn't really work out. So I just painted the entire locomotive black, which is prototypical for these. I also tried to get the white stripe on the running board by using a white Sharpie pen, um, but I was not able to do that because every time I would use the Sharpie pen, uh, the paint pen, I would have um, overage on the running board, and I, and I hated that. So I just painted it black. <clears throat> So we'll start at the front of the locomotive. <clears throat> and you can see we have some Polar Express uh, <laughs> sort of vibes going on. And you can see the weathering a lot better too here. Uh, we have a, a really, this is my favorite part of the locomotive, which is the pilot. Um, I was watching a video on how to get this sort of um, blown up um, technique and I, I did that by pointing my airbrush under the pilot uh, like uh, this tip of the pencil here being the airbrush and spraying and the paint from the airbrush which is basically in a cone would brush up on the pilot so I would make passes back and forth and that would create that effect and I really like the way that looks. I think it looks great. Um, <clears throat> a few other things I did on the front. Uh, I gave it painted marker lights. Uh, that's a combination of Penn Central Green and Epoxy. Uh, and they're all filled in. I just did green markers. Um, I don't really know much about the markers or the point of markers. Uh, but all the photos I saw that are green. So I just chose green. I did a hand-painted brass bell, and that was painted using a vintage gold paint. Um, I gave this locomotive a, uh, um, a yellow, uh, light yellow LED headlight, which looks really good when the locomotive is in operation. I, I also gave it a lens. The lens is epoxy, and there's also 1223 on the number boards. Um, under the headlight, I uh, first drilled out the headlight and smoke box before I painted the locomotive so that I wouldn't run into any issues um, during the install. However, uh, the LEDs I used were just a little too big, so even after the locomotive was painted, I had to go back and drill. Um, and during that, I ripped the headlight off of the locomotive, uh, which was very upsetting. And um, <clears throat> so, I, I mean, I fixed it, but uh, I've learned my lesson. Um, I will double check the fitment on that the next time. Of course, you can't tell. I mean, I fixed everything. It, did, it didn't rip any paint off, but it was just a little startling. So moving on back to the cylinders... You can see they also have a weathered look. You can see we have a black, and then that kind of fades to the sand color or uh, dirt. And that was done by starting heavy on the paint on the airbrush uh, away from the locomotive and, and, and pulling up and releasing. And that's what created that effect, and it looks really cool. Um, the opposite was done for the tops of the locomotive, the top, so for this section here, this section, and this section I would start heavy on the paint at the top and pull down. 
and that's what created that effect. And here's a side view of the locomotive. You can see that is a very attractive locomotive. I really, really like these Van Schwergen Berkshires. Uh, this is a beautiful brass model. I got this model for uh, very cheap uh, because it was corroded um, and had foam damage. And I was able to rectify that using a Dremel polishing wheel. Um, you can see I have um, windows and uh, numbers. Uh, on the cab, there's also the proper N2 designation here, but that got covered up in paint. And you can also see Pierre Marquette at the top, uh, which is just uh, covered in dirt, so to speak. We'll look at the other side of the locomotive. You can see this has a Pittman uh, DC-71 motor. This is a very smooth runner. And here's the other side. Again, you can see the PR market at the top, and you can see our dirty 1223 over here on the cab. And again, the same effects have been applied over here. Uh, dirt on the cylinders, uh, or dirt and sand, and then ash on, on the tops of the locomotive. Moving on to the tender, Whoops. Moving on to the tinder, you can see it's quite dirty and faded. I wanted to give the decals a faded look, so I applied the decals and then I went over the decals in black paint. I was a little heavy handed on this, and I've learned my lesson. I will save this step for the very end. Um, but this was my first time using an airbrush. Uh, but I mean, they still turned out okay. You can see the tinder is also weathered. Um, it has uh, sand and dirt kicked up around the trucks. And our reporting marks on the back. And this other side, you can see uh, the faded Pierre Marquette and the uh, sand and dirt around the trucks. And I also gave this tinder a real cold load, which is um, a sand uh, blast material, which uh, is coming off just a little bit, but it is very firm uh, material. It's just uh, excess there that's coming off. That'll fall off eventually. And there is our locomotive. One other thing I forgot to mention was I wanted to give the locomotive a um, um, a brass or a shiny uh, builder's plate. And I tried doing that. And there's a technique that you can use to get a shiny builder's plate. However, I could not get that to work properly on this locomotive, so I had to exclude that. Um, and uh, there it is. There's our first airbrushed locomotive. Thanks for watching.